Welcome back in Trackside. Once again, race fans here to the Turn 3 Racing Network tonight, the Swift Motorsports Performance Truck Series fires things off. Race number seven here in season number six looks like we may see a fresh face into victory lane. Only one previous race winner in the field here tonight. We're going to hit the lady in black Darlington Raceway for tonight's feature event. Qualifying session already underway. Just about everybody turning in those time laps. So let's get rid of the track information. Overcast cloudy foggy here at Darlington. See which one of these drivers are able to navigate their way into a fast time. Who will walk away with the performance pole award here tonight? Sitting top of the speed charts. What a quick time here in qualifying. 72 of Jerry Cochran the third gonna pick up a quick time 2859 is the fast time on track Justin Gann right there as well look for Gann to be one of those quick drivers here tonight as well it looks like Tommy Haynes gonna be the final driver with a time lap still one more time around the track and then Haynes will Finish out the qualifying running order. Jerry Cochran, the third, still top of the speed charts here tonight from Darlington Raceway. Justin Gann, Mike Rominger, Todd Cray, Nick Hunt rounding out your top five here tonight. 12 drivers making the trip for the Carolina Shores. 160. So as the music fades away in the background, how you doing? How you feeling? Out there in TV land, race fans, glad you could all join us here tonight as always. Bringing you all the calls from Trackside. Speaking of Trackside, we're going to get ready to take a brief commercial break. Head down Trackside for your national anthem performance poll award belongs to the man behind that the wheel of the 72 silverado jerry cochran the third will bring us to the green flag we're gonna step away for a brief commercial don't go anywhere race fans we'll be right back With the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker, the future is feeling. Yeah. 
track side right after the flyover finishes. All the drivers have made it to the starting grid and we are awaiting official word just moments away and we should see these drivers begin to roll off here tonight so with that being said you hear those familiar sounds in the background you know it's time to run down tonight starting lineup in the carolina shores 160 starting inside row number one behind the wheel of the 72 machine fast as always with the grace and jade photography 72 machine jerry cochran the third justin gang gonna put his tundra just to his outside with robin gern gray back in row two row number three here tonight from darlington raceway the double of nick hunt and the 15 of John McMillan Jr. Tommy Haynes and John Wimbish back in row four. Row number five here tonight, Lee Campbell and Todd McGregor. Gary May and Jerry Cochran Jr. will finish out. The 12 truck field here tonight wouldn't be a night without mentioning our race control. And officials just down the hall, Andy Starcher, Don Kidder, we're ready to go racing. Music will fade, and we will fire these engines off for the first time here tonight from Darlington Raceway off of turn number four, and away we go. Green flag flies for the first time here from Darlington. Quickly going to drop that timing and scoring over to the left-hand side of your screen. Let you keep up with your drivers on this opening lap already. Wimbish dropping from the top to the bottom. Single file racing back behind your race leader. Jerry Cochran going to lead him into one. A little bit of a foggy overcast day here in Darlington. Had some storms rolling through that chopped up happy hour a little bit. So these drivers working and racing on limited information here tonight from Darlington in a long way to go. 150 laps in the Carolina Shores. 150 just... An amazing track that Darlington is, very technical, and it will jump out to bite you, jumping out to a good lead already, half a second advantage for Jerry Cochran the third. Ryan Gurr going to stick his nose into that second position, grab it while Gann falls back to third. Cray and Hunt holding serve, single file from there on back. And good to see you as always, cousin Jess check it in. Cheering on her favorite drivers in the field here tonight. We're gonna take a look down at the turn number one as the field heads by. Everybody continue to chase this fast. Black and yellow, 72, Grace and Jade photography machine front of the field. The fog seems to be lifting a little bit here as we continue these green flag, the green flag run. Yes, we're only five laps into tonight's green flag run. Let's switch back here. There's a little bit more action going on. The 15 right now hounding the double O of Nick Hunt. John McMillan Jr. looking to pick up a position. It looks like uh, Todd Curry sporting a hug. A little different livery than what we may be accustomed to seeing. We're going to see if we can't get those ones I'll fix back on for you. Meanwhile, pole sitter walking away at the front of the field. Opening things up now, almost a three-quarter of a second advantage out front for Jerry Cochran the third. Raman Gurga to sit and keep that ChevyAccessories.com number nine. In that second position, Dan Crane Hunt running right here. Third, fourth, fifth on the racetrack. John McMillan Jr. still trying to work his way around the John Deere machine. How about creeping up? 
In the background, the crown of the Royal, number 17 of Tommy Haynes. He's starting to make his way into a top five position. I'm just running an all chromed out machine. We thought maybe something went awry with some of the graphics and paint schemes here tonight. But no, the cameras have all the proper filters and Craig just out there uh, shiny. A few distinct lines right there. You can see three separate lines being run early here through turns three and four. And really three and four, that's where a lot of headway can be gained or lost. You got a lot of momentum coming down this back stretch right here. If you hit that front end right and you get that, what I, I call it diamond in the corner anyway here at Darlington. You, yeah, you can keep it down there on the bottom of the racetrack like we just seen John McMillan Jr. do, but you do drift up about that half a lane. And even that half a lane lets you dime in the corner properly, get back on the gas, and shoot down this front stretch into a long corner. A little bit of a dust dump with the outside wall. I believe that may have been the 30 of Justin Gann. A little bit of scrapes down the right side of his machine. Stay green flag raising here. Whoa, big loose condition there for Tommy Haynes. He's all sorts of sideways. Sideways in the back of the field. We're going to go on board up front now. Let's go behind the wheel with Todd Cray chasing after. Teammate in front, Justin Gann started in the second position, has fallen back to third. Meanwhile, Cray has just kind of been stuck right here in this fourth position, has made some headway. Nobody able to keep Jerry Cochran to third within striking distance early here tonight. Lap number 12 going to go on the board. Cochran with a one second advantage. You can see now second, third, fourth, fifth all right here. Throw a blanket over him. John McMillan Jr. pulling that Canadian sponsor. Exalted Craftsman. Chevy Silverado into the pitcher, into the mix. Race leader has broken away. It's a four-car pack. Back another second and a half to another three-car pack. Look on Tommy Haynes, John Wimbish, sixth, seventh, eighth all the race away. Let's go back here. Let's take a little look at what these gentlemen are doing. Great opening run so far here tonight from Darlington Raceway. Clean and green for all 13 behind us as lap number 14. He goes on the board. Drivers beginning to close in on each other. Let's take a look here. Battle for that second and third position. And just again, Todd Crane, John McMillan Jr. going at it. Mike Rominger with some big problems. What happened with Rominger? Do we got a replay, guys? Can we see what happened? Rominger dropping all the way back to the sixth position. Something really went wrong here for Rominger. We're going to take a look here. Let's see back on lap number 13. There you can see him up against that outside wall through turns three and four. And just giving up a ton of time and a ton of momentum just like that from second to fifth. Now dropping even further with the damage. Rominger going to go back to the eighth spot as we rejoin the race, the battle for second, third, and fourth. Raging on here at Darlington Raceway. little look back off of the tail end of the tundra piloted by justin gann that's a look back at two hard charging silverados todd gray john mcmillan jr right there third and fourth and looking over the rear deck lynn of justin gann running in that second position 
Almost two seconds now out front for your race leader, Jerry Cochran Jr. Stepping away, walking the dog right now, just about a half a straightaway advantage. But and Wicked Race, Race and Jade Photography number 72 machine looking to get to victory lane for the first time this season and catapult himself. Inside of the top 10 came into tonight's race, sitting 11th in the overall point standing. So Jerry Cochran, the third of one of the guys that um you you are gonna have to watch out for over the the back end the back end excuse us the back end of of the season. Small battles going on at the rear of the field. Let's go back here. Let's check in with Mike Rominger now dropping all the way outside of the top 10. You can see heavy, substantial damage down the right side of his Silverado. The ChevyAccessories.com machine going to need a little bit of body work when he heads to pit road. Oh, and into the outside wall once again. Into the outside wall once again. That's going to compound the problems for Mike Rominger. Really be able to salvage a good night. Work his way back up through the field. We'll keep our eye in on him. But back to the battle. The fight is for third and fourth for the moment. Justin Gann has stepped away. Separated himself just by about a half a second, letting these two drivers mix things up here. Third and fourth now, Crane McMillan Jr. going at it. Lap number 22 gonna go on the board. We are inching closer to a quarter. All the way through tonight's race. And we all know me. We all know I like to, uh, I, I always start thinking about fuel strategy. I always start thinking about pit strategies, right? You gotta be smooth. Getting to pit road here at Darlington Raceway. Whoa, big moment there for Justin Gann. Almost into that outside wall. Big moment for Gann running in the second position. He's going to give up a little bit of time now to both Cray and Cray's in the outside wall. Todd Cray into the outside wall. That's going to give the spot now to John McMillan Jr. And that's going to be a common theme. We're going to see a lot of these drivers overstep that line and pick up. I don't want to say it's a coveted or it's a it's an uh, uh, an honor. You know what I mean? But everybody scrapes the wall at Darlington. That's why they call it a Darlington stripe. It's so prominent in every race that's here. It's easier at the end of the night to count the drivers that don't have that Darlington stripe as opposed to the drivers that have it. Uh, you, you, you're going to touch it. You're going to hit the wall. It's just part of it. You accept it and you move on. You just try to minimize it throughout the race. And significant enough contact for that 21 to drop a handful of speed. You can see him now 10, 15 truck wings back from this Canada sponsored number 15 Chevy Silverado of John McMillan Jr. He's trying to make a splash. He's trying to make his way inside of the top 10 in the overall point standings as well. We'll see how the rest of his night goes. John Wimbish on a move. Looking to get around the Crown Royal, number 17 of Tommy Haynes. These two drivers going at it for the final position inside of the top five. So a lot of racing action here at Darlington and Haynes. A little touch of that outside wall. But 26 laps in, you got to start thinking about green flag pit stops. With the tricky pit road entry, it's very easy to miss your pit road entry. It's very easy to blow the marks on that last little left-hander. For those of you that have driven here, you know what I mean about that pit road. Very tricky. Very long. 
How long will these drivers stay out? What's the strategy going to be? Are we going to go a two-tire stop here at Darlington tonight? With a race leader way out front, you got to do something different. We'll see how it all plays out. Meanwhile, front of the field, still showing the way. Behind the wheel of that grease and Jane Photography, 72. Your performance Motorsports Pole Sitter here tonight. Behind the wheel of that 72, Jerry Cochran the third continues to show the way, leading every single lap so far here tonight. You're watching the Carolina Shores 150. to shift back just a little bit. John McMillan Jr. was able to work his way around Justin Gann. Gann giving up that third position. There you can see Mike Rominger early contact with the outside wall. Now in danger of being the first car one lap down. Just 30 laps into tonight's race and Rominger bottom of the racetrack on the apron. Gonna let the lead lap cars go around and McMillan Jr. catches the wall off the two. Looks like we may have green flag pit stops underway. Todd Cray gonna peel from the racing surface and down to pit road to 21. Gonna open up the round of green flag pit stops. Take it a look for just a moment at that number 14 machine of lead Campbell. Todd McGregor up in a in a in a mad dog fight. Gary May. Working his way inside of the top 10. He's going to move into the ninth position. In a little moment. There it is. Ganda pit road. Justin Gann going to make the big dive to the bottom of the racetrack. Big dive to the bottom of the racetrack and on to pit lane. Justin Gann going to give up the third spot to head to pit road. And this is going to be big. And Todd Cray. A leap from Justin Gann. There's going to be about a two to three lap difference on the tires. We're going to see how it all shakes out. Race leader. The pit road. McMillan Jr. going to follow suit. Tommy Haynes looking to take over the race lead. What does Haynes do? He's going to head to pit road. John Wimbish also on to pit lane. Nick Hunt, he will stay out on the racetrack. The Dumbelo will lead a lap here at Darlington and become our first new race leader of the night. Behind the wheel, that's the magic John Deere double low. Whoa, big moment there as Todd Cray rockets around. Full head of steam on the outside. Todd Cray will go around Justin Gann, but Gann getting up to speed. Can these drivers now leap from? McMillan Jr. And Jerry Cochran the third. They're going to make short work of John Jr. on the bottom of the racetrack. But there's a race leader coming back out in front. Jerry Cochran. Looks like he will reclaim the race lead. Mike Rominger going to head to Pitt Road this time around as we take a look at the 72. Who now has Todd Cray hot off his trail. Justin Gang going to reclaim third. John McMillan Jr. will move his way back into the fourth position, but not before Gary May leads a lap here tonight at Darlington. Three race leaders make that four. Looks like Todd Cray will walk away with a lap lead here. 
Craig going to come across the line. Blame the top spot. Todd Craig going to lead a lap here tonight from Darlington. It looks like some trouble out of the 72. Are we seeing fuel strategy here from this 72? Game up a ton of speed. He is off pace. 72 is off pace. Jerry Cochran, the third, dropping like a rock. Was right there with Cray and Gann has given up. Over two seconds now. Make that over three seconds easily, and that number is climbing quick. Jerry Conklin, the third dominant driver in the opening stages, the opening corner of tonight's Carolina Shores, live from Darlington Raceway in beautiful, sunny Darlington, South Carolina. And the night not looking so sunny for that 72. Your performance motorsports pole award winner. Dropping through the field back into fourth, but well behind your race leader. Almost a five second disadvantage now for Cochran. So as we start to get into the meat of tonight's race, things going to stretch themselves out just a little bit. Let's head to one of our few battles on the track here. Lee Campbell and Todd McGregor going at it side by side through three and four. You're not going to be able to do that too many times here tonight. Unable to take the position just yet. Digging on the bottom. Looks it up to the outside wall of the Caterpillar number 71, Silverado of Todd McGregor will pick up the seventh position. Meanwhile, front of the field, things heating up. Let's go back here with your race leaders closing in on some lab traffic. Todd Gray, Justin Kenny, going to mix things up. Big moments there for Cray, almost into the outside wall. Had to give up the race lead to Justin again. It will become our fifth different race leader of the night. Six lead changes here at the Carolina Shores. 150 for the Performance Motorsports Trunk Series. You're watching season number six, race number seven, live from beautiful Darlington Raceway in South Carolina home track here for for myself just about three hours away just about two and a half hours away from Charlotte Motor Speedway as well so I love to be in I love to be where I'm headquartered at a lot of great tracks within that three to four hour range Martinsville Richmond Bristol let's talk Atlanta how about road Atlanta Talladega. Daytona's a little bit far, a little bit outside of that that hourly marks that we like, but Daytona Homestead right here as well. So a lot of racing. Ooh, big moments there for the five of Gary May. Race leader Justin Gann starting to close in on the 14 of Lee Campbell. Campbell will move 
to the left that allow race leader Dan to go around Todd McGregor. The next driver with a crosshair on his rear deck lid. McGregor gonna try to fight hard here. But about halfway through the run on the tires. It's gonna be a tall task to keep that fast truck of Justin Gann behind him, John Wimbish. Previous race winner here this season. Wimbish going to victory lane. I believe it was three weeks, three to four weeks ago. But we were at Daytona International Super Speedway. John Wimbish taking one of the closest wins of the season. And Justin Gann gonna make short work. He's using him up on the bottom of the racetrack. Man, my goodness. I guess if you can't take the good years home, you might as well burn them up and burn them down. Showing up and showing out here tonight at Darlington Raceway is. The driver behind the wheel of his Toyota Tundra looking quick, looking again to victory lane for the first time this season. Justin Gann stepping out to a 1.3. Second advantage as drivers close in. 100 laps to go here tonight from Darlington Raceway. You're watching the Performance Motorsports Truck Series. As we reach a third of the way through tonight's race, 100 laps remaining here tonight from Darlington Raceway, we begin to see drivers struggling once again with the grip into the outside wall. Field getting stretched out during this long green flag run. We've seen comers and goers, and we have got two drivers out of tonight's race. 12 drivers took to the starting grid. We are down to 10 on track with only five remaining on the lead lap here tonight from Darlington to Raceway. Both Mike Rominger and Nick Hunt have sustained substantial, significant damage and put an end to their nights. They will walk away. 11th and 12th here tonight. Gonna jump back just a little. Let's watch this battle. Lee Campbell trying to close back in on the 71 of Todd McGregor. Both of these drivers listed one lap down, so it is a battle for the lucky dog position. As this long green flag run continues, we're gonna take a look real quick here at. Todd Cray. We've seen Cray have, have a little bit of problems, a little bit of issues in that first run. Contact with the outside ball, dropped them back behind your race. Was able to utilize a little bit of strategy to get to that top spot and lead a handful of laps here tonight, but has since dropped back to third. 14 and a half second. Advantage back to fourth place runner Tommy Haynes of just about a half a track advantage. Your top three absolutely step it away. Justin Gann, man, on a mission to get to victory lane, and he is almost in Florence. If you know the area, you understand the reference. Florence, just about 45 minutes to an hour away from here and already just again out to a two-second advantage. With our second round of green flag pit stops looming in the mix, we're gonna have we're gonna see uh, some green flag pit stops for the second time. I would say here in about the next. Mm, I would, Within 10 laps, we should see this entire field heading down the road.
So with the little green flag run, drivers will separate themselves. Gaps being built. Let's head back to our only battle on the racetrack. Let's go back once again here with Campbell and McGregor as they fight it out for that final lucky dog position. The final driver, or the first driver, I should say. The first driver of one lab down. Should we see a late race caution? This thing has got that flag to flag feel, right? We've already had a round of whew, a little bit of a dust up with that outside wall. That's not going to be good. A little bit of magic man moments here for Lee Campbell as well. Now you see him. Now you don't hear racing in the virtual world and Darlington Raceway. So as Campbell has some connection issues, we'll see if those get themselves worked out. Looks like they will. Oh my gosh. Big hit. Big hit of the outside wall. Todd Craig going to absolutely pancake the right side of the truck. Off of the wall through one and two. That's going to smell trouble. Craig losing time quickly. That's closing in at the front, man. John McMillan Jr. We almost counted him out already here tonight. And we all but began to give this thing away to Justin Gann. He was out to almost a three second advantage. It has been cut in half. And is Gann saving a little bit of fuel here at the end of the run? Had a gap to give up. Is he possibly? Is he possibly, <clears throat> my goodness, working a different strategy? We already see right here, Jerry Cochran to third. He was dominant in that opening portion of the night. He is now in danger of being the first driver one lap down, sitting in the fifth position, giving up a lot of time. On this second green flag run, has Jerry Cochran the third? Is he on a much different strategy? Are we watching Justin Gann manipulate his race strategy? Todd Cray, he's gonna pit from third after the contact with the outside wall three laps ago. Todd Cray will bring the 21 to pit, pit lane. Promise we can speak. Promise I can spit it out. Question is now, how long do these race leaders stay out? Todd Cray already on the pit road. He is going to be much quicker with much fresher tires. Todd Cray will fall off of the lead lap, but how far is the question? It's going to be key that Cray keep himself just one lap down here. It looks like he's easily going to do that, but now the big drive starts. Now he's got to hammer down. He's got to get some heat in those cold good years. He has got to find a way around some of, these, some of the traffic that will be laid out in front of him. We're going to go back to this battle once again. This is going to be an important battle. still holding the position over Campbell. Gary May has made his way into this battle, so it's going to go from a two-truck tango to a triple threat. Ooh, into the wall. Man, what a save. Oh, no. Up the wall. Oh, my goodness. Oh, big hit. Big hit on the backstretch. It is off of the racing surface. We are going to stay green flag here. As the 71 absolutely destroyed there on the back stretch. Big, big hit to the inside. The safer barrier, safer barrier or not, that is a massive hit. 17 of Tommy Haynes going to have a little dust up with the outside wall. He's going to scrape some paint off that crown warrior. And Toyota Tundra, the 17, going to drop now to third. Justin Gann going to work his way to pit road during all the, <clears throat> excuse us, I don't want to say during all the chaos, 
But during all the action, race leader Jerry Conklin III has come to pit road. That's handed the race lead over to John McMillan Jr. at the front of this field. Things gonna get interesting right here. Tommy Haynes looking to stay out. If he stays out one more lap, he will inherit the race lead. What does the 17 do? And it looks like he has every intention of staying out on the racetrack. Gary May, what does the five machine do? Will he bring it to pit road? Less than 10 laps away from the halfway point here tonight. We are under our second green flag pit stop conditions. And here comes Tommy Haynes. He's going to pull the 17 crumb royal machine to pit road. Gary May making his way through one and two. Will the five stay out to lead laps or will he head to pit road? We're eyeballing this thing here. Justin Ginn to pit road. One lap prior. Then John McMillan Jr. Let's see where these two come back out onto the racetrack in reference to each other. There you can see Jerry Conklin the third getting himself back on to the lead lap but Justin Ginn is right here Ginn is right here he has reclaimed the race lead Gary May going to stay out for yet another lap Todd Cray catapults himself back into the relevant mix of the podium conversation Cray going to move to third we may yet to hit pit room Todd Cray will reclaim whoa big moment Ooh, big slide there for Gary May. He's going to look for Pit Road this time by. Drivers settling back into this long green flag run here tonight from Darlington Raceway, just around the corner from the midway point. At the Carolina Shores at 150. We're going to go ahead and bring it to you early. What do you say? We show you your driver highlights in spotlights, give you your mid race report. And how to start. start right here at the front of the field. The man showing the way he's led the most laps here tonight from Darlington Raceway, just up the coach, the Vir coast, the Virginia Beach native, looking to walk away with the Carolina Shores 150 checkered flag here tonight, looking to the inside now of some lab traffic. Justin Ginn continues to separate himself at the front of this field. Man sitting in second here tonight, looking to turn his season around. Todd Cray looking for a podium finish. Started back in fourth, has gained two positions, has had trouble here tonight with outside, with contact with the outside wall. We'll see if this 21 can keep it inside the top five and inside of your podium spots. Todd Cray sits in second. Up three positions from where he qualified here tonight. Behind the wheel of his performance motorsports truck. The fast Chevy in the field. John McMillan Jr., one of your final drivers to hit pit lane for his second green flag pit stop. We're going to continue to eyeball him from sixth to third. John McMillan Jr. Arounds out your podium drivers here tonight. And back to your driver highlight. Let's talk about this man right here behind the wheel of that AB Nation. Number five machine. Gary May. 
final driver to pit road on lap number 71 just four laps ago he's gonna be on a much different strategy but up five positions from where he qualified from 11th to 6th Gary May will be one to watch that's going to do it for your driver highlights and spotlights as we go back to what will be a battle for second and third short-lived at that as john mcmillan jr will take second spot away from todd cray your mid-race report looks a little something like this 12 performance motorsports truck series drivers took to the starting here tonight we have still got nine on the track but only Five, three, man. on the lead lap, your performance motorsports pole award winner, Jerry Cochran the third, right here, just three truck links in front of race leader from dominating the start to just trying to hold on. Seventy-seven laps to open things up here tonight in the Carolina Shores. One fifty live from Darlington Raceway. You're watching race number seven in season number six for the Performance Motorsports Truck Series. If you're looking to find a good league, if you're looking to run with some of the best, look no further than Swift Motorsports. They've got multiple different series, multiple different nights running behind the wheel. You can find them. On iRacing.com, the world's number one racing simulator. Once again, that's iRacing.com. So we're going to be looking at drivers hitting pit road in the next, I would say you're going to see them at about another 20 laps or so heading down pit road for what will not be the final stop of the night. These guys only able to make about 35 laps on a tank of fuel. Regardless of if you hit pit road before lap 100 or right there at it. You're still going to have to make one more stop from there. So it, ahead of these drivers still two more rounds of green flag pit stops. We've seen a little bit of trouble getting to pit road. It hasn't been the problem that we may have foreseen, but Darlington is always a tricky track. No real battles to speak of. We're going to stay right here with your race leader, Justin Gann. You can see right behind him, John Wimbish listed. First driver, two laps down. He's looking to get one of his two laps back. While wow, that 72 trying to carve his way around the track and keep himself just hanging on to the tail end of the lead lap. They're going to navigate the slower traffic and make their way back down and through three and four. For the moment, we're going to check the speed charts. Let's check the speed charts this time around. A 3017 for Jerry Cochran, the third, and a 3058. So, so almost two tenths of a second faster. That is what Jerry Cochran, the third, is going to need. He is going to start, he is going to need a click off some much quicker. A lap. He's going to need a tenth or two a lap here to, to separate himself. I mean, it, it's going to be hard. Let's be honest. It's going to be hard for him to rail back in these podium drivers. Uh, he may need a little bit of help before this thing is over. But the drivers settled in with the gaps all but established. 
it's going to take a big mix up. But for Jerry Conklin III to work his way back into podium contention and race winning uh, possibilities. Just what a, what a turnaround, right? From, from taking the Performance Motorsports Gold Award, leading the opening 25 plus laps, to just trying to keep yourself on the lead lap. Man, that's gotta be a, a bit of a roller coaster of emotions. You know what? We, we don't want to harp too much on him as he is the race leader. Justin, again, you can see him. <clears throat> I don't want to say driving safe, but driving smart. A little bit high on there on the exit of four. But you can see him keeping it away from that outside wall, especially on corner exit. Floating it up there in the center, a little bit too close for comfort, but there you can see at least a half a trunk off of that outside wall. Coming out of turn number four, making sure he doesn't have any, uh, any issues. Going to carry the speed, there you can see again. Just keeping himself that, that half a trunk length. Off of the outside hall, he's still got a 2.7. Two the two and three quarter second race advantage here. So he does have the time to give up. He does have the ability to really manage this third green flag run here. Has the opportunity to maybe stretch it a lap or two, give up some time on the racetrack. We'll see what the strategy is for him. Looking to see him come to pit road somewhere around lap number 98 to lap 100. And again, we are just around the corner from seeing our third round of green flag pit stops. Todd Cray will more than likely be the first driver to pit road. And Cray should be looking at pit, pitting here the next five laps. to take a look at the track from town into turn number one that you can see Todd Cray scooting his way by sold out packed hell house here tonight for the performance motorsports truck series Carolina Shores 150 That's just a little bit of a look from turn number one down to the start finish line lap number 91 on the board. We will see our third and final, well, not our final. We're going to see our third round of green flag pit stops here within the next 10 laps. And there it is, Jerry Cochran, the third. He's going to pull to pit road. He will pull to pit lane, put himself one lap down, but the biggest problem. The biggest problem I see with this for that 72 is he may fall two laps down. Right, he was close to being off of the lead lap already. Pitting, he's going to be put one lap down, possibly two here. Very long pit road. Just now into the box, and indeed he will be put a second lap down my how the mighty have fallen your pole center here tonight jerry Conklin the third falling outside of the top five now sitting in seventh multiple laps down And there is some speed built into that Tide machine. The 56 Tide Silverado piloted by John Wimbish. Yes, listed two laps down, but he's able to keep um, keep pace. You can see a little bit of a loose condition right there at a two. 
Gave up some track time to your race leader, but able to stay right here in his tire tracks. Tire tracks, Wimbish. He's got speed. It's just come to him a little bit too late. Little bit of a dust up. With that outside wall on the front stretch, don't need that contact. And there it is, Lee Campbell, Todd Cray, both on the pit road this time by. John Wimbish gonna head off of the race track and down to pit road this time around. Race leader Justin Gann gonna continue to pound the pavement. And cross the line, lap number 96, now on the board. So as we close in on that 100 lap threshold, with just a little over 50 laps to go here tonight. If you haven't already, show these drivers some love and appreciation. Make sure you drop them the thumbs up before you go. If you haven't already, be sure to join us in that push to 4,000 subscribers. Drop these drivers that thumbs up. Click subscribe and smash that bell. Over there on the right-hand side, get notified anytime we go live through the Turn 3 Racing Network. Whether it's myself, David the Cave, or anybody else back at the Turn 3 headquarters, we do appreciate each and every one of you, each and every time you stop by, whether you're stopping in to say hey, or you are one of our dedicated fans, friends, family, or one of our many different sponsors, we do appreciate each and every one of you. Without you, there would be no one, so before you go, be sure to drop these drivers a thumbs up. And there it is, Justin can get ahead to pit road this time around. He's gonna hand the race lead over to this man right here. No, he won't. 15. Uh, oh, big moment for John McMillan Jr. Big trouble coming up pit road. Man, that is not what you wanna see. Let's back it up. Let's check the sim box replay. Tricky entry to pit road on the brakes and just not enough. Ooh. That right side toe is going to be a little bit askew. Tommy Haynes going to stay out on the racetrack, become the eventual race leader. So back to the point once again. Hopefully not taking any shots behind the wheel. The Crown Royal, number 17, Toyota Tundra to the front of this field. And pit road problems prove to be detrimental. And John McMillan Jr. not only going to lose that second spot, he's gonna drop out of a podium contention and off of the lead lap. How far will he fall? with the pit road problems. Tommy Haynes gonna stay out, extend this run. Just again, Todd Craig, Gary May. Listen as the final four drivers on the lead lap. Gannon Cray already making their third stop of the night. Both Haynes and May yet to make their third stops. We'll see how long these two stretch it here about a 12.8 second advantage for Haynes as he peels for pit road. Let's see if we've got a ooh, bit of a moment and he's going to clear ooh, another close call with those barriers on the entry to pit road. So over the 100 lap mark here tonight, the countdown has begun, but the gaps have already been maintained. Race leader Justin Gann with a five and a half second advantage over Todd Cray. Cray with another 
12 seconds back to third place runner Gary May. And look who is creeping on a come up back into the... Whoa, Justin Gann, hold up. We were going to jump to another driver, but Gann with problems. Gann with problems trying to work his way around the 14 of Lee Campbell. We're going to stay right here for just one moment. Big moment here for Tommy Haynes. He's got to keep himself out front of that 30. He's going to work the high sign drop down to the bottom there in the entry. Slide away, fresh good gears, and now again getting a little fed up trying to get by the 14, losing track time. Here comes Todd Cray in the mix. Cray working his way back on the seat. We were going to go to another driver, the man that has moved his way back into third, back into a podium position. Your Performance Motorsports Polo Award winner. Let's not count him out too soon. Jerry Cochran, the third, back in third. 15 seconds back, but the battle is for the race lead. Cray and Gant side by side into three. Smooth as chicken loops on the bottom of the racetrack. Todd Cray will complete the pass. And work his way back across the stripe and reclaim the race lead here tonight in the Carolina Shores 150. You're watching the performance of Motorsports Truck Series. Getting a little dicey, a little edgy here as Todd Crane trying to work his way by some of the lap traffic. He will put the 17 of Tommy Haynes off of the lead lap. That is going to leave us with just four drivers remaining. Gray, Gann, Cochran, and Gary May going to head to pit road this time around. Still don't understand this strategy from May. He will still have to hit pit road one more time here, so he will lose at least one, maybe even two laps. And he's going to give up um, some track position as well with Tommy Haynes. So, I mean, while, while one side of me says, you know what? You got to do something. Right? When you realize the speed is just not there, you got to switch it into strategy mode. You got to figure out something. You got to do something different. Run where they ain't. Do what they don't. You got to find a happy medium. And Gary May doing all he can, but he will be now listed two labs down. Sitting in the sixth position. We'll see if he can translate that back into a top five. Because we still got Quite a ways to go here tonight, and we still got one more round of green flag pit stops. We'll see how it all uh, how it all unfolds, how it all shakes down. Justin Gann now dropping to the wayside. Mm, big moments here now, late in the race, and we have got a lot of gamesmanship going on. Todd Cray. He's never really been one to, to get on that fuel-saving strategy. Craig usually is one of those drivers that's like, you know what, the amount of time I'm going to probably give up saving fuel and not keeping myself in my race rhythm, it's going to cost me more than if I have to make that second stop. So here he is, not just grabbing the race lead, but he is... Walking the dog now over five seconds out in front of Justin Gann, who is losing time to Jerry Cochran the third. Hmm. Let's ask ourselves this race fans, how about this? Jerry Cochran the third, remember that second green flag run right around, it began right around lap number 33, lap 35. You seen him cycle back out of the 
pit lane with the race lead. Didn't put up much of, fight, much of a fight to keep the race lead. And then he dropped back all the way to the final driver on the lead lap for not just that second run, but the third. He has now worked himself about 10 seconds closer to the front of the field than where he was. Gap to second less than 10 seconds. So are we seeing a flip of the strategy now? Justin Gann looks to be saving fuel. Todd Cray, it's not in his vocabulary. He's still hammered down. And man, we're, we're closing in on 35 laps to go here tonight in the Carolina Shores 150 live from Darlington Raceway. You're watching the performance of Motorsports Truck Series in partnership with Swift. Let's not forget about all our other associate sponsors, Airs Eye Racing Paints, Butt Kicker, Beef Jerky Unlimited, Dale Earnhardt Chevrolet, and Premier Racing Setups. All amazing sponsors, all well worth working with. Couldn't ask for a better group of admins and officials, race control, as well as sponsors working here with, for I believe this is going to be the sixth year in a row, the Performance Motorsports taking up the title series sponsor here for the trunk series so a big shout out to everybody back behind the scenes that make things work and make things go around over there at performance motorsports No real gaps to speak of, so we're going to just jump around a little bit. Let's see if we can watch and find a little bit of something here. John Wimbish going in with the 14 of Lee Campbell. That is not for a position. That is just for track position. Wimbish holding on to that fifth position for the time being. First driver listed two laps down. And just what an amazing night here from Darlington Raceway. Say what you want, say what you will. Well, about, oh, well, there was only this many drivers and this and that. I tell you what, you can get out there with five guys and have 50 cautions. So these performance motorsports trunk series drivers putting their skills on display. No problems, no real issues. We had the one little dust up. It makes up on the back stretch for Todd McGregor and I believe that was the 15th of John McMillan Jr. that had problems coming to pit road. It was a John McMillan Jr. with trouble coming to pit road. But neither deemed worthy of pulling a full course caution will keep things green flag here tonight as race leader Todd Gray works off a four back across the stripe lap 120 goes on the board. Field stretched out quite a bit. We'll continue to ride with your race leader, Todd Cray, back off of turn number four, back across the stripe. 
right around the corner from 25 laps to go. We'll give you one more bit of house cleaning here tonight. 12 drivers took to the starting green in the Carolina Shores. 150 for the Performance Motorsports Truck Series Championship race number seven here in season number six. 12 drivers to the starting grid. We are down to just eight remaining on track, but only three on the lead lap. Pulling the trigger and coming to pit road for the final time tonight. Yerp. Performance Motorsports Truck Series Pole Award winner tonight. Jerry Cochran to third, gonna be the first to pit road. Justin Gann gonna work his way to pit road from second. Todd Cray extending this run. He's gonna stay out an extra lap or two here. It's gonna be interesting. Tommy Haynes. Last time he was on pit road was 23 laps ago. He's going to have another 10 laps before he has to head to pit lane. But there you go. Look at the difference in tires. Look at the speeds across the line. We're going to have to double check them next time around. Todd Cray with a 3108 last time by. We'll check the time he's scoring on Jerry Cochran the third this time around. Does Cray end up pit lane? Looks like he's gonna keep it out on the racetrack. So the 72 with fresh tires, he's gonna lay down a fast time, a 29-29 to race leader. 31. 30. That is 2.2 seconds faster. Todd Cray cannot afford to give up much more track time. And there it is. He's going to pull the trigger and he's going to head to pit road. Todd Cray will complete the round of green flag pit cycles for the final time here tonight. Clean entry onto pit road. Let's go to the battles here. Justin Gann listed one lap down, looking to get himself easily back onto the lead lap while Cray is on pit lane. Off in the distance, you can't quite see him in the background just yet, but Jerry Cochran III is indeed starting to reel Gann in. What was over a 10 second disadvantage, Jerry Cochran has brought it back under five. Cray up to speed, full head of steam for Justin Gann. He's gonna cross the line, will he close in? There it is, there's the difference off of turn number two as Todd Cray still getting up to speed into turn number three. Gann continues to close in on your race leader. Todd Cray now just has to get, <clears throat> just has to get 23 more laps out of this truck to get to victory lane for the first time here in the truck series and who would have thought we'd be this far into the season still talking about Todd Cray and Justin Gann both still searching for their first wins it's going to be a fast 22 laps you can see now a six second deficit that is going away quickly for Todd Cray over Justin Gann. The gap has stabilized from Gann back to Cochran, remaining wide and out at that five second mark. And there's gotta be something with the tires here. There's got to be a difference with the tires. Todd Cray still running over 30 second laps. Very interesting. Todd Crane with a 3079 last time around. Justin Gann gonna run 
a 29.46, so 1.3 seconds faster. So one second faster is Jerry Cochran. So the drivers in second and third, faster than your race leader, Todd Craig. Do they have the time to make up the distance? There you can see off in the, off in the background, working his way up before you caught a glimpse of Justin Gann. He's still got John Wimbish in tow. Those two have been tag teamed up pretty much all night long. Let's go back here with these two guys. As just again trying to close in on race leader Todd Crane. Now a three second. Or under three second advantage for Cray. This time around a 31 flat for Cray. Gan gonna run a 29.76. So still that 1.3 seconds faster. There has got to be something going on with these tires. I believe these... Whoa, big moment for Wimbish. And luckily he didn't bounce that off of the wall. No, sorry. Bad joke, bad joke. Todd Curry with a bit of a moment, and he's going to give up even more time off of turn four in the first stretch this time around. The gap now down to just three tenths of a second. And he's going to be no match. Much fresher tires. And I believe that's what it was. I believe there was a run that these drivers were going to have to take. Uh, no tires. Todd Craig coming down fuel only. Whew, that's tough. Darlington, no tires. Hmm. Yeah, I'm good on that. I want no parts of that. Here we are, late stage. As you can see, Todd Crane really struggling with the grip now behind the wheel of that number 21 machine. Tough break here tonight. Cray uh, is looking at finishing on the podium here tonight, but what looked like could become a race winning performance will fade away. As the lap count ticks away, just again, 2.4 seconds out and climbing another two seconds back to Jerry Cochran the third. And this is why you run every lap. This is why you race. Less than 50 laps ago, we had pretty much written off this man right here, your performance motorsports pole award winner the Virginia native we all but all but wrote him off fastest in happy hour fastest in qualifying dominated the first quarter of tonight's race and we gave up on him never giving up on himself Running hard lap in, lap out. Here he is, Jerry Cochran the third. Not only reclaims a podium position, but moves himself back into second. We'll see if he can continue to reel in the guys in front. We're going to go high above with the turn three drone cam now. Let's look at this thing from high above. Let's see if we can get a, a visual on the gap. Race leader Justin Gann, 4.6 seconds out front. We're going to look here. 4.6 seconds seems like a long way away. Still unable to get that 72 in the picture. Just about a hundredth of a second faster last time around. 72 is going to have to do more than that. Closing in on 11 laps to go this time around. Justin again looks poised for his first checkered flag of the season. And can it come tonight? All but, all but a late yellow. We'll end the chances. Will we see this thing stay green for another 11 laps? Will we see flag-to-flag -flag action here tonight 
and the Carolina Shores 150. For the Performance Motorsports Truck Series, brought to you in partnership with Ayers Eye Racing Paints, Bud Kicker, and Swift Motorsports, an amazing group of sponsors, an amazing group of officials in administration behind the scenes making things click week in week out once again thanks for joining us here tonight for all my adrenaline addicts we have been hot added here tonight from darlington raceway 140 laps of green flag racing action my goodness so if you haven't already, show these guys some love and appreciation. Let them know you've enjoyed tonight's race right here from Darlington Raceway. And it's not all about tonight. It's about all of the racing action so far this season. We've got some great races coming up in the next three weeks to close out the month of April right here each and every Monday night live with the Performance Motorsports Trunk Series. We're going to hit Watkins Glen next week. New Hampshire's on the list. And we're going to head to beautiful Homestead Miami Speedway racetrack that I absolutely love to close out the month of April. Mark it on your calendars. Don't miss any of the action. We've got eight laps of green flag racing remaining here tonight in the Carolina Shores 150. Into the outside wall goes the 82. Little bit of contact with the outside wall. No harm, no foul. We'll keep it heading in the right direction. And I think at this point in time, I don't know that Justin Gann's going to be that worried about a green-white checkered. I think most of these drivers um, are out of, out of sets of tires. So I don't know how crucial coming to pit road would be. Or possibly these drivers keeping one set of tires in their back pocket just in case they see that late race caution. But if you have them, you're coming to pit road if we get this late race caution. We'll have less than five laps to go, which means it would be a green-white checkered finish. And with only three drivers on the lead lap, make it four if Haynes gets the, the lucky dog. Uh, I mean, it, it's almost a no-brainer to come to pit road if you have any tires whatsoever. High five for race leader Justin Gann off of four. John Wimbish super loose off of two. Four laps to go this time around. We are trucking things off just over five miles of racing action. Remain here tonight in the Carolina Shores 150. We are down to just four to go. You know what, guys? Can we take it up high for the final two laps? Can we take it to the top? Yeah, okay. All right, we're going to go high above the track here for these final three laps. Let's go to the turn three drone cam. Want to give a big shout out. To everybody, men of the cameras back behind the scenes, the unsung heroes. Uh, we try to give them all the credit where credit is due. Without them, we would not be able to bring you some of these amazing camera shots week in, week out. So a big tip of the cap uh, to our good buddy Jack Oswald behind the remotes here tonight for the Turn 3 drone cam. So we do appreciate him, our good buddy uh, Weston Langston down there on pit road behind the wheel of the pace car. Not a very busy night for him as we'll come back through three and four. This time a round white flag will go in the air. 
We've got ourselves 1.3 to go across the stripe. White flag flies. Final lap here tonight from Darlington Raceway. The Swift Motorsports one to go. Here tonight as drivers continue to chase Justin Gambon. It's going to be all for not as he makes his way into three for the final time. Justin Gann will roll off a thorn across the stripe and he will put his name in the winner's column here in season number six. It took seven weeks, but he finally got it there. Jerry Cochran the third, recovering well here tonight. He's going to finish in second. And Todd Cray will get the job done and walk away with the final spot on the podium in that third position. Final driver on the lead lap as well. So a lot to be said about making the podium here tonight. Dan going to enjoy his cool down lap. A little bit of a post-race celebration. You would expect a smoke show here. On the front stretch. And the man that walked away with the race win checkered flag in hand here tonight. Justin Gann going to burn it down for all the fans in the stands. An amazing flag the flag race here tonight from Darlington Raceway. So as he enjoys killing out the mosquito population, bring it a step away for a brief commercial break. Get things set up and ready to go for your post-race interviews. Don't go anywhere, race fans. We'll be right back.
and backtrack side at the conclusion of tonight's Carolina Shores 150 right here from Darlington Raceway. Flag to flag racing action. No cautions to speak of. What a night for racing here. With the Performance Motorsports Truck Series, we're going to see if we can dial up and have a few words with some of the guys that walked away on the podium. Let's see if we can dial them up behind the wheel of that 21 machine. Back on track, back into the podium positions. Todd, it's Dave. You got us? Hey, Dave. How you doing, buddy? I can't complain. If I did, it wouldn't matter who would listen, right? So we'll just you know, <laughs> we'll just keep it to ourselves. I got a good ear for you tonight. <laughs> well, man, back onto the podium here tonight. A little bit of a different paint scheme here uh, where you're just trying to switch things up and maybe get a little uh, different mojo going for the season. Yeah, actually, it's been working for me. I've been on a pretty... Pretty good hot streak over the last few weeks in general for uh, my racing. So uh, yeah, it's been it's been working pretty good, and uh, yeah, it all came to a halt tonight for sure. <laughs> well, uh, well, it's still a good finish. Let's I mean let's not you know beat around the bush. Still walking away with a podium at a very tough track. Uh, Look like you picked up a couple of Darlington stripes out there. How t how tough was it be with the with the fog? kind of there in happy hour and qualifying how was it to judge the setup uh it was actually uh the fog was pretty cool actually but definitely there was a lot of change i uh didn't make some adjustments that i normally would because man i was really loose uh, in practice and getting ready to start for the race coming off of four really loose and uh yeah i definitely missed the setup didn't uh foresee the track you know it looked like we got some sun coming out here and uh yeah i just missed it tonight um I had, I had some good stuff early, but like you said, got back in the rhythm of uh, tapping that wall and uh, just just couldn't get my rhythm together and couldn't get it on the right rear. I, I could go all night, but hey, we'll take, with a race like this, we'll take the podium. Um, good run there for Justin. He was on fire tonight. Um, you know, there was some good racing there, some different strategy. Of course, once I get behind a little bit, I said, ah, I'll just use my tires up and uh, it never works out that way, but I had fun and, uh, you know. We're going to move on, and we'll be ready to go. Well, you gave us something to talk about uh, throughout the course of tonight's race, so uh, you got to be proud about that, bringing uh, some attention to sponsors, uh, yeah. the happiness, and all Cousin of that Jess good Cousin Jess is out there, you know? Cousin Jess likes the, uh, you know, I got to get I got to get those laps led and, uh, you know, keep me off the bad list this week. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think Bailey is on the bad list. I don't think you have anything to worry about. Uh, that's tonight. true. So that's you, true. You, you dodged a bullet. But nonetheless, <laughs> uh, man, always a pleasure to catch up with you at the end yeah, of these buddy. things. You've been here enough times. You know the drill, so Mike yeah. is yours. Don't have really much going on. Cousin Jess, Trixie, Swift Motorsports, Turn 3 Racing Network. Um, you know, like I said, everybody here that puts the show on. And, uh, that's about it. We don't have many sponsors on the truck. We're kind of flying under the radar here for a little while. So uh, we'll end it with that, And uh, but we'll be back strong next week. All right, we'll see how you go turning left and right next week at the Glen. But until then, my uh, friend, <laughs> I like to uh, laugh. No, no comments, <laughs> sir. But uh, yeah, we'll be there. We'll be there. All right, we'll see if <laughs> you right, can't Dave. surprise everybody. Until then, stay uh, safe and keep it fast. All right, buddy. Thank you, Dave. And that is what you call genuineness out of a driver. Heard we were heading to the Glen to turn left and right next week. And laughed it off. Todd Cray. No laughing matter here tonight from Darlington Raceway. We'll walk away with the final spot on the podium. The 21 will finish in third. That's going to move us right along the list. Let's see if we can not dial up. And have a few words with your poll award winner here tonight. <clears throat> Excuse us. Leading us to the green flag, dropping back after that first round of pit stops. Jerry, it's Dave. You got a copy? I got you, Dave. So what went from me questioning what in the heck you could possibly be doing, giving up all that time, it seems to come full circle at the end. You had fresh tires, closed back in, got yourself back into a podium. Do you think if you had to put a lap count on it, how many laps do you think it would have took to try to run down Gan there for that top spot? Uh, I hate to say this, man, but unfortunately, I, I didn't have nothing for him. Um, I feel like maybe if we were, 
you know, had a caution and we could start, you know, get a restart and I'd be there with him. Maybe I could do something with him. I don't know. He was, I feel like he was better than I was in three and four and watching him, uh, several runs when he was coming to lap me and just different times. It, it, three and four is where he was beating me every lap. But yeah, to get back to that whole tire thing, man, you know, we don't have enough tires to run the whole race. We got to go one stint without a tire. So you run actually two stints on the same set of tires and it's really, you know, when do you, when, when do you not take that set? When do you take that set? And I didn't the second run they did. And about, I, he about put me a lap down. I thought I was going to be in some big, big trouble there, but like you said, it, it all worked out. I just still, uh, I still, I, I need some more secrets, Dave. Well, man, if we had some secrets, they definitely wouldn't be about Darlington. I love to watch the racing. I love to go to Darlington. Absolutely despise being on track. This is, <laughs> I, I honestly, everybody says, how, Dave, how do you do it? But I get lost. Uh, I, I, know, I know we've heard the big boys in NASCAR talk about it, but I get lost on what corner I'm at. And I'm like, okay, I'm going into, nope, that's one. And, you, you know, it, it's a whole different ball game oh, yeah. with these things. Both ends, different, night and day different. You drive both ends different. Yeah, it's it's definitely, um, it's a fun track. It's it's tough, but I, I really enjoy the track. I enjoy um, having to, you know, hit, hit your marks. Because here, man, if, if you mess up one corner, if you just mess up getting in on either end, uh, it, man, it's it's killer. It really is. Absolutely. Well, walking away with the pole position here tonight, you led a handful of laps. Um, finishing in second, this should catapult you into that top 10 in the overall point standings. Uh, we've got a road course coming up, a little bit of a short track with New Hampshire. Then we're going to finish off the month of April at Homestead. How you like in these next three weeks? I, I like it the rest of the season, Dave. I really do. I, I, I'm a I'm a road course fan. I like Watkins Glen. Um, and then, yeah, I, I'm, I like short tracks as well. I know Todd's great at short tracks. He's going to be tough. I know Bailey's he's tough on short tracks. Uh, I, I mean, so it's, yeah, good schedule. Uh, we just got to be on top of our game and try to do the best we can every week against these guys, man. That's all we can do. Well, man, we wish you the best moving forward. Before we let you go here tonight, would you like to give any final shout-outs, thank yous, love yous? Yes, sir. As always, my wife, Grace and Jay Photography. Without her, I wouldn't be sitting where I am. She's the one that puts all this and helps me out. She's my main sponsor, my main supporter. Uh, so I need to thank her every week for what she does for me. Um, Velocita, everybody here at Swift, Gan, Andy, Don, everybody behind the scenes that makes this happen. Uh, turn three, you Dave, everything you do, great job broadcasting every week. I enjoy going back watching it. Uh, yeah, that's all I got, man. Thank you. Well, man, again, congratulations on the accolades here tonight. We hope you continue uh, the the consistency over the next handful of weeks. We'll see if we can catch up again. But until then, stay safe and keep it fast. Copy that. We'll see you, Dave. All right, there you have it. Final few words from the man that walks away in second here tonight. Jerry Cochran the third going to go from pole position to almost a lap down all the way back to second. An amazing job here tonight. Behind the wheel of that, Grayson Jade Photography. Number 72 machine, Jerry Cochran the third walks away in second. And that's going to lead us to the man of the moment, the man of the hour. Finally getting it done and getting into victory lane for the first time here in season number six. Justin, it's Dave. How you feeling, bud? I feel like a winner, finally. Well, I, w I mean, I wouldn't go that far. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. Man, uh, seven races into the season, finally getting that first win. How you feeling about the rest of the season now? We're right around the corner from starting that championship run. Three tough weeks of racing ahead of us. How you how you truly feeling about the season? Uh, well, here the past few weeks, man, I've been putting in a lot of uh, test time and and trying different strategies and and different uh, tracks and stuff like that. So, I think um, you know you can take what you learn from other tracks and bring them to to different places like here and um the main main struggle i've had this season is learning uh throttle control so 
I'm just trying to find that extra little bit of speed. Bailey seems to have it most weeks. And, uh, you know, so I'm just trying to trying to figure out where I'm losing it. And uh, I've been working on that pretty hard. So hopefully it's starting to pay off. Well, it, it definitely paid off here tonight. You were the quickest uh, for the uh, vast majority of tonight's race. You got out front, stepped away. You had a little bit of a moment there at the end, having to run down Todd with uh, some company and lap traffic behind you. You navigated your way through all that in victory lane for the first time here tonight. So we won't keep you much longer longer so you can enjoy these post-race celebrations. So you know the drill. We're going to shut up and uh, Mike is yours. Oh, yeah, I'll give a shout out to uh, everybody over at Performance Motorsports, Hyperdrive Racing, Assassin Motorsports, Sim Magic, Ayers Eye Racing Paints, um, everybody behind the scenes over there at uh, Swift, and uh, you guys up in the booth for putting on the broadcast for us. And, and Cousin Jess, I know she's out there watching, so uh, she got two shout outs tonight. So, uh, so definitely give a shout out to her. Well, man, if that's all, we'll let you continue to spray the champagne. We'll step out of the way. We'll see how you go about things next week at the road course. That's going to be a delight for all as well. Love some road track racing. Uh, so, uh, yeah, a lot on the line, a lot coming up. Glad you finally got to victory lane. But until next time, my friends, stay safe and keep it fast. Appreciate it, Dave. All right, there you have it. Final few words from the man that finally gets the job done. Justin Gann all over the podium. But yet to get to victory lane, he will put a stamp on it here tonight and walk away with the top spot in the Carolina Shores. 150 live from Darlington Raceway. What a night. What a race. We've got some great racing action coming up uh, tomorrow night with the Swift Motorsports Airs I'm Racing Paints Xfinity Series. But it was about these thundering trucks here tonight pounding the pavement 150 laps straight green flag action. It doesn't get much better than that. Big tip of the cap to all of the drivers in the field here tonight with a great run here from Darlington Raceway and with producers hitting those buttons in the background you know the sounds it's time to run down tonight's unofficial race results walking away with the top spot here tonight in the performance motorsports trunk series brought to you by Swift checkered flag in hand front of this field your race winner behind the wheel of that 30 machine Justin Gann your Performance Motorsports Truck Series Pole Award winner, Jerry Cochran III, will lead a handful of laps here tonight and finish in second. Todd Cray getting back to his podium ways. He will finish the night in third with Tommy Haynes right there in fourth. John Winbish going to bring the Tide Pringles bounce. 56 truck home to fifth, sliding home in sixth here tonight from Darlington Raceway, the five of Gary May. Lee Campbell right there in seventh with Jerry Cochran Jr. coming home in eighth. Ninth place tonight belongs to John McMillan Jr. after problems with the pit road barrels. 71 Caterpillar Machine of Todd McGregor will finish in 10th. Mike Rominger back in 11th. The double O of Nick Hunt will finish out the 12th. Truck field here tonight. What a race. What a night for all 12 drivers in this field. Big tip of the cap and shout out to our race control and admin officials just down the hall. Andy Starcher, Don Kidder keeping all the drivers straight lap after lap thankless job but somebody's got to do it so again much appreciated gentlemen man what's left to be said not much more after that we're going to begin to cut off the lights and roll up the cords but before we go if you haven't already 
Remember to join us in that push to 4,000 subscribers. Show these drivers some love. Drop the thumbs up. Click subscribe and smash that bell over there on the right hand side. Get notified anytime we go live here on the Turn 3 Racing Network from myself and everybody else back in the headquarters. Stay safe. Stay loved, my friends. And until next time, we'll meet you in Turn 3.